Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn the answer of this question. If you need to copy all of the tables from a SQL Server database to flat files, how would you do that? So here, if I would like to use the import export wizard or export wizard, if I want to copy all the tables from one database to another database, it gives me the options to do that. But if I want to create a uh, multiple files uh, let's say I have 10 tables I want to create 10 files from uh, f for one for each uh, then uh, export wizard uh, doesn't give me that option so I can create one file at a time by using export wizard but I cannot select uh, multiple tables uh, that will be converted to the multiple files so what options are left for me so uh, if I go to the uh, SSDT and uh, uh, let me clean this part so if I go here I can use a data flow task here and then uh, inside the data flow task I can use uh, uh, I can read from the SQL server table by using or uh, lady source uh, and then uh, I can put that information to the destination that can be flat file destination so this is one option where I create multiple flows uh, for and uh, each one for let me make a copy and paste it here so what I will be doing, uh, I will be creating uh, the flow for each of the table. So I will be reading the f reading from the table and then writing to the flat file. Reading from the table and writing to the flat file. This is one way to do it. And if you can see that, uh, I'm kind of doing it here parallel. So I can put uh, maybe 10 of uh, these uh, 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 flows here and read from 10 tables in parallel and put to the destination. Still, uh, the number of... Uh, parallel flows that will run in parallel that depends upon the property of a data flow called engine thread property so uh, I uh, right now I don't want to go into that part but I, I want to show you here so you have engine threads 10 so that that's pretty much mean you can run uh, like 10 of your uh, these flows in parallel but if you have 100 of them they will not be running in parallel all of them so first 10 will be run and then uh, next 10 and, and then keep, keep going so uh, this is one way but this is a lot of work you have to uh, go and configure each of uh, the query and then uh, go and uh, um, make a connection uh, for the flat file separate so there will be hundred of connections here if you have under table and uh, um, you, you you will be you know making uh, or writing your queries or even selecting the table a uh, hundred time for each uh, and it will be different for each of the uh, flow here now let's go back and uh, see if there is a quick way to do it so I have a post uh, uh, that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to perform it here. Don't want to waste the time. So I have a post here. This one, if you click uh, right here, you need to copy all the tables from a SQL Server database to flat files. How would you do that? So uh, the uh, blog uh, uh, blogspot address is sqla.blogspot.com, and uh, these all the SSIS interview questions you can find there and answers and a lot of other. Uh, post I have written on SSIS so click on this one I'm gonna walk you through so you can learn this one in just uh, uh, two minutes and answer this question so define the variables here most important variables are your schema name for the table and table name and folder path where you want to write those files the next part is you will create the ADO.NET connection manager because that's the connection manager we need to use in the script task to read the data from the SQL server tables next part okay you have execute SQL task that's the first task you are putting on the table uh, in the package and read in a schema name and a table name and putting in full result set so you are saving your result uh, schema name and table names uh, in the object type variable that's called the username underscore table name you can name anything what you like so once uh, we have the information saved in the object type variable the next part is uh, we need to read uh, that information uh, in the iterations so we will be using for each loop uh, so that can uh, iterate or loop through that uh, object type and give us one uh, record uh, that will be schema name and table name in each of the iteration so we are using for each ADO enumerator and then we are providing the object type variable here and then we will be going here and in the mapping variable we will have schema name and file name I created this uh, uh, variable called file name actually this is uh, the same in the table name because I want to 
create the file name with the same table name so that's uh, that's why i called it a file name you can name anything next part is uh, you will be passing uh, uh, bring in the script task and uh, uh, then uh, passing the variables to it so it can use it can so i have provided file delimiter uh, file ex extension file name uh, folder path and the schema name so all those uh, will be going there the next part uh, here inside the script task you write all the script you can copy and paste in your script task and uh, you don't have to make changes if you are following the same variable names and connection manager name so we, we made a connection we open the connection by uh, whichever we are using here we are using adio.net test db connection so once you have it uh, i have the variables that are translated to some uh, internal variables here um, now there is the query I'm building it saying select start from a schema name plus table name so this will be just a select query and uh, now once I have the query I'm uh, uh, using SQL CMD and uh, uh, passing this uh, query statement to this one now what will happen we will load that uh, data to the uh, data table and uh, once uh, the data is loaded for that uh, uh, select query to the data table for one one table at a time and then uh, we will loop through that uh, data table and write to the file so that's how we are gonna uh, keep looping for each of the table and writing to the new file every time so that that's uh, um, very very uh, I will say very important to remember one thing about this uh, um, what is happening here if you see we are reading uh, one table uh, uh, data at a time and if you have thousands of table maybe or um, even hundreds uh, uh, each table uh, uh, is not running in parallel it will be running in a sequential mode so it, it will read the table name and schema one time then uh, load the data into the um, data table and then uh, uh, loop uh, you know through the data table and write the data to the file this can be a slow process if you have millions and millions of records and you have hundreds of table this might not be a best solution for you so you you might uh, have to convert this solution into parallel maybe in uh, you create multiple packages and then uh, uh, in each of that you will read only 10 uh, tables uh, by select making uh, changes in this query so here you are selecting a uh, table name and schema so in each of the table you will select different uh, tables and that's how you might want to run them in parallel so don't, uh, don't really uh, I, I will recommend if you have millions of records and hundreds of table you might want to not use this uh, solution uh, come up with a different solution uh, with the parallel execution because this can be time consuming so I don't know how much time you have to run maybe you have 12 hours or maybe 24 hours and it is okay for you to create those uh, 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 flat files by using this uh, package thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you in next video